Good evening, everybody. Hell's Unicorn here once again, giving you the post-debate wrap-up unicorn style, so to speak, or my style, so to speak. I just got done watching uh, the interview that Ron Paul did with Sean Hannity, and quite frankly, I think that Paul might have done well not showing up to this interview, but he may have done better by showing up, and I'll get into that in just a minute. But first, the overall debate itself. This is prototypical Fox News fair. I wasn't expecting fair treatment, although for the first half hour to 45 minutes it looked like things were going pretty well, but I knew once we got to foreign policy it would uh, degenerate into a circus sideshow, and evidently it was Michelle Bachman who was the one that wanted to play sideshow clown. Suffice to say, I've made my hatred of this woman known. I think that she's a liar. I think she's a hypocrite on a bunch of issues, including religion. And I think that she is a political non sequitur. And frankly, I'm thinking maybe even toying with the idea of sending money to whoever runs against her in the next congressional election, even if it means sending money to a Democrat, because quite frankly, I can't stand this fucking woman. All I can say in regards to the idiotic platitudes that keep, she kept spewing, spewing out. I was only hearing one thing over and over again. Blah, 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 blah. We need to kill many brown people in that Persian stronghold. It's the only thing I was hearing. You know, they might get a new nuclear weapon. We need to kill a hundred or two hundred thousand people just to get our point across that we're the man and they're not. I'm tired of constantly hashing this crap out over and over again, but truth be told, this stuff needs to be discussed. And I was asked several years ago, would I still support Ron Paul if he took a more mainstream Republican pro-war viewpoint like all the other candidates did? This was back in the previous election. And I said, absolutely not. His foreign policy is what basically drew me back into caring about politics to any extent whatsoever. I, I thought politics was just for liars and murderers, basically, because that's primarily what makes up the government. But I got a little inkling of hope in the Republican Party because of him. In fact, enough so that I switched parties and became a registered Republican, and I identify myself as a libertarian Republican. I'm basically a libertarian with a Republican affiliation. I don't necessarily agree with anything in the Republican platform unless it agrees with my already set up ideological views. And in the time since that previous election, I've gone through, you know, some local offices here as a Republican, and I am now currently the judge of elections, and I am definitely going to be canvassing my locale for Ron Paul. I will be phone banking. I will be doing whatever I can to make sure he wins my sector of Pennsylvania. However, Pennsylvania is quite a long way off. So the name of the game right now is Iowa. There is a big money bomb coming up tomorrow, and I plan on donating as much as I am able to. I'm going to go over my bank account records online and see how much I can spare, and that will basically be the end of it, and I'm going to do this as a big F you both to Michelle Bachman and to Sean Hannity, and also to Fox News as a whole. The rest of the contents of the, de of the debate were not really terribly interesting. I am not really interested in what Rick Santorum or Rick Perry has to say. I'm not interested what any pundits have to say about them supposedly picking up some support in the state of Iowa. It's going to be meaningless. It's probably going to amount maybe at best to high single digits. We're talking fourth and fifth place here basically for them. But the Hannity interview was really bad. Not only was Hannity rude to the basically the point of almost being like Bill O'Reilly. He had the audacity to bring up those damn newsletters again. This is an issue that has been gone over and over again repeatedly. And, you know, for someone who demands, you know, you know, Newt Gingrich and Mitt Romney have heard this question done to death, Paul's been hearing about this for a couple of decades now. And, frankly, it's over and it's done with. But not for this warmongering idiot who thinks he's a good Catholic. I often rip 
on the Roman Catholic Church as it exists today because, frankly, I think that a lot of the doctrines that they're teaching are false, but mostly because I don't like the kind of politicians that they tend to put out, particularly in terms of federal politics. Having said that, my representative, Michael Fitzpatrick, is a Roman Catholic, and he is actually pretty good. And so I supported him in the 2010 election, and I was glad to see him defeat another Roman Catholic and a certifiable nut job. I can't remember the guy's name. It was uh, Patrick uh, Murphy. Yeah, Patrick Murphy, that was his name. The guy was a total idiot. He was basically Nancy Pelosi's you know, fellow Jesuit yet lapdog and did basically everything in concert with her. I was real happy when he was out. I think that Ron Paul has done an excellent job of not playing defense this time. He goes on offense, and he challenges this nonsense. Does a very good job at it, too, and he needs to do more of it. I think more important even than him winning the presidency is enough people getting informed that this Iraq war business stops. And for more reasons than I think a lot of you might guess. It's not just the fact that people are going to die. That pretty much goes with any war. The problem is, is this will give greater occasion for our liberties, what little we even have left, to be continually eroded. We've already got a bill going through the Congress to the President's desk saying that the President of the United States can detain anybody he wants so long as he can make some kind of a case that we're some sort of terrorist threat. I could disappear tomorrow, theoretically, because of this. And... Nobody has the intestinal fortitude in Congress, with maybe the exception of Rand Paul and a few others, to stand up to this nonsense. I mean, MSNBC, there's a couple of people on there saying, oh, these are civil liberties. Bullshit. You voted for half of the people in that are passing this crap. Your darling Barack Obama is going to sign it into law. Hope and change that we can believe in. My ass. The sense of urgency that I have is obvious here, and I think that all of you should have a sense of urgency as well. While yesterday I found it funny, today I find it tiresome. I'm sick of hearing it. I'm sick and tired of the lies, the distortions, the bloodthirsty rhetoric, the psychosis. I'm sick and tired of all of it. The American political experience is tantamount to a blood religion, on par with the sacrificial faith practiced in Aztec temples. And I'm launching my protest. I want to be the Cortez that comes in and puts a stop to it. I'm going to destroy this empire, not through force of arms the way Cortez did and through superior military strategy, but through a superior idea. And this needs to be transmitted across the fruited plain to everybody. We need to go to Iowa, we need to go to New Hampshire, we need to go to South Carolina, we need to go to Florida, we need to go everywhere up until April as best we can to grab as many delegates as we can. We need to fight hard in the caucus states to achieve victory, and we need to fight hard in the primary states to place or show so that we can grab delegates. We get to a brokered convention, we get enough people in there to tip the scales, we can grab the nomination, and this crap will come to an end as soon as he is inaugurated. With it, we might need some people, some people of a good, solid conviction to come in here and help protect Paul, because I, it's not beyond the realm of possibility that should he actually win election, that someone will probably try to kill him. I have not ruled out that possibility, given the history of people either being assassinated or having attempted assassinated assassinations on them for A, B, or C. So anyway, this was kind of a run-of-the-mill you know, debate commentary. There wasn't really much of a debate to speak of. It was actually pretty terrible. I thought Paul did great. I thought everybody else was lousy. I'm all debated out, and I'm looking forward to actually having some elections here and actually winning some delegates. That's what I'm focused on right now. So until next time, with, a, with prudence to myself and benevolence to all of you, good evening.